as you can probably see by how dark my room is, it's kind of gloomy and rainy this weekend, which is kind of appropriate for this month's scriptural reading. I am just blown away as I study this passage and the context where it plays into the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, I'm ready to dive into this. Be ready to turn a lot, because this is one of those passages, although it's in the Old Testament, has a lot of implications and a lot of uses in the New Testament, and has a lot of meaning for even us, the 21st century church. So, without any delay, let's get the Bible. Meet my Bible out. And as if you saw in the opening for this video, we're going to be in the Old Testament in Malachi. I'll be honest with you, Malachi is just one of those Bible books of the Bible I really didn't know much about until I started studying for this passage. The only verse I really took had any foreknowledge of in Malachi was mainly about the passage for God's people tithing and stealing from God. But when I think about it, it really makes sense when you read this passage. So, open with your Bible to Malachi chapter 4. Now, let's go ahead and give a little history lesson. Malachi was one of the, the last prophets of Israel. And he wrote this roughly about 100 years after Israel returned from the Babylonian exile. So they returned to Israel, even though Israel really wasn't in control of the Promised Land, they were still out of exile. So Malachi is looking back on everything that's been going on since God rescued his people from the Babylonian exile. But Unfortunately, as we'll see, God's people really haven't been faithful to them, to God. So, I don't know about your Bible, my Bible has a, like a chapter heading that says, The Coming Day of Judgment. Now, at first, when you read that, you have mixed feelings because as God's people who are saved by grace, we should be joyful, happy God's coming. God's finally going to redeem His people from this fallen world. And also we think, alright, God's judgment, God's about to ju judge the world, all the lost people. But as we read this passage, that's not what is Malachi is saying. It's quite the opposite. So let's start with... um. Verse 1, Malachi says, The Lord of Heaven's army says the day of judgment is coming, burning like a furnace. Does that sound familiar to you? As last month we talked about Peter and the world being consumed in that refiner's fire. Now, the Jewish people really understand this, this analogy, burning like a furnace. They understand the furnace is purpose is to refine the metal. The furnace's purpose is to purify the metal. So the day of God is coming like this this fire that's going to consume the world and refine the world. But not just the world. As we continue, Malachi says on that day, the arrogant and the wicked will be burned up like straw. Now, remember that analogy. He talks about the, the wicked being burned up like straw. This is a very agricultural type imagery. Like farmers clearing the land, preparing the land for a new crop. They will burn it up. To get, away, to get rid of the old and make way for the new. Sounds a lot like what is going to happen with 
the new heaven and the new earth. God's going to destroy the old to make room for the new. For the new. And he continues, and this is what got me. He says they will be consumed, roots, branches, and all. Now that imagery should sound familiar to you because not only does the Old Testament talk about this burning away of, of stuff, Jesus himself quotes this exact passage, not talking about the world, but talking about the church and God's people. So let's real quick, let's jump over to Matthew, if you can, jump with me to Matthew 7, verse 15. And this is Jesus talking to the church, to his followers, to his people. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You will identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. See, there, there's this really big disconnect in the church. We make our faith about what's just what's in our head or what's in our heart. Jesus is clearly saying, you will know true believers by their actions. And Jesus continues, he says, can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Now this is where it really gets tricky. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. And, he, and listen, so every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. The exact same thing Malachi is saying to the nation of Israel, to God's people in the Old Testament. He said, if you are not doing the things of God, you're useless. And just like the farmer chops down and destroys the old crop and burns it up to make room for a new crop, that is what Jesus says here. He says here, and he says, yes, he says, so every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown in the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. He's saying you can identify who really belong to God by their actions. And there's a lot, I'm not just talking about the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. I mean, this is true for anyone who claims to be a follower of Jesus, anyone who claims to be part of the family of God, Jesus is making it clear, you will know who is really a believer by their actions. So, and this is my warning to you church as we've approached an election, an election year, be sure to watch the actions of the politicians you vote for, not their words, not their ideas, not what they claim to believe. Because if they claim to believe God, if they claim to be a conservative, but their actions aren't conservative, if they're not being God, like if they claim to love God, yet don't love others like God love others, then they're not, they're not really part of God's family. And this imagery of burning up branches does in here. So let's jump over to John. Now this passage in John is going to sound a lot familiar. It's going to sound familiar to a lot of us. John 15. My chapter here says John, or says Jesus, the true vine. Jesus go. Jesus says, I am the grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they can produce even more. You've already been pruned and purified. You remember that fire? Purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitless unless you remain fruitful unless you remain in me. 
And this, he continues, he says, Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I am them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch. Such branches are gathered into a pile and what? Burned. Same thing Malachi is saying in, in the Old Testament. Let's go back to Malachi. Malachi continues, well, if I go back to the right one, Malachi continues, and this is for, for, further validifies that Malachi is not talking about the world, he's not talking about the lost, he's not talking about the Democrats, he's not talking about those who clearly are an abomination to God, he's talking to God's people. Listen to what he says. Remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant. All the decrees and regulations that I gave him on Mount Sinai, Sinai for all Israel. Look, I am sending you a prophet like Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, lost people don't obey God. They don't care about God's law. They don't care about what God said to his people. So Malachi and God are referencing God's people, not the lost people. And he goes on, did you catch what he said? He says, the great and dreadful day. Of, why is the day of the Lord dreadful for God's people? We know it is for the lost people, but why would it be dreadful for, for God's people? He continues, he says, this pro that that dreadful day of the Lord arrives, his preachings will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. He's saying, basically, you know, turning is the New Testament idea we have is repenting. This, the prophet Elijah is going to try to get God's people to return to living and acting like God's people. To turn away from their sin, to turn, turn away from their selfish desires, to turn away from the world. This prophet says he's going to come back and plead with God's people to turn away from their thirst for earthly power, turn away from their thirst for earthly greatness. But he, Malachi concludes with a warning that we need to heed today. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. So what God is saying to my God, if you do not repent, if you do not return to me, if you do not stop acting like the world, if you do not put away your evil selfish desires, if you do not be my called and chosen people, I am going to return and I'm going to curse the land. Now we know in Genesis the land was already cursed. So this curse upon curse is about is the idea of things getting worse and worse and worse. And we know in the New Testament, all the New Testament writers talk about in the last days, things will get worse and worse and worse. But what Malachi is saying here is he's, it's not going to get worse and worse and worse because of the Democrats. It's not going to get worse and worse because of the evil, wicked people in the world. It's not going to get worse and worse because the evil of the world is getting worse. It's going to get worse because God's people are getting worse. God's people's hearts are becoming more and more cold to the things of God. And this is the big theme of the New Testament. Jesus came and he pleaded with first his, you know, Israel and the Jewish people to return to God. And as we all know, they rejected Jesus as prophesied. They rejected the cornerstone. So Jesus comes to the Gentiles and the rest of us. Jesus is pleading with us, just like Malachi is pleading with God's people in the Old Testament. 
put away your evil, your selfish desires, and return to God. Now I know that may seem like a stretch. This is this is I don't think it's any coincidence that when our spiritual fathers put the Bible together, they put Malachi right when next to Matthew. And it's not just because Malachi was the last prophet of of Israel. There's a specific reason why they did it. And I'm going to talk more about that next month for Christmas. So with that, I hope you're having a great weekend. And I said something about this pasture is appropriate for this time of year. And here's why. In the South, or even other agricultural states, late fall, early winter is the time where Farmers, people with gardens, get out and prune the bushes and prune the trees. You get rid of all the old branches that are no longer bearing fruit. Why? To make more room for more new fruit in the spring and in the summer. So you get this idea Right now, God is pruning His people as we lead up to Christmas. Those who, just like Jesus says, those who are not bearing fruit will be pruned and purified. So, I leave you with this: as we lead, we're coming to the holidays. What things in your life need to be pruned? What need to be cut off and thrown, as Malachi said, thrown into the fire and burned up. I have been dealing with some temptations over the last few weeks that God and I have been wrestling with. There are selfish desires that we have that although they may not be all evil in themselves, but when we put them before a love for God, that makes them evil. evil. Just like in the Old Testament, they want it to be, God's people want it earthly greatness. They want it earthly power. They want their Messiah to make them a great earthly nation to conquer all these other nations. Does it sound like anything going on in America today? Anything that's being pursued by not the Democrats, but the conservatives, supposed conservatives of America. We need to realign our priorities. Not our ideas, but our actions. And that's what Malachi is talking, telling God's people to do in the Old Testament. God had already freed them from Babylon, but yet they were, they were in they were still slaves to their selfish desires. There are things that God has freed us and blessed us here in America with, but yet we're still in bondage. And Jesus paid much too high a price to free us from that bondage, whether it's, it may not be drugs, it may not be alcohol, it may not be a sexual promiscuous life, but thing it but it may be a dream, it may be a relationship that you know is not from God. It may be something in your heart that you want more than anything else. Even God Himself. And this is my final one. If it's not bearing good fruit for God, I'm not saying if it's not making you happy. Just because it makes you happy does not mean it's from God. The world is all about being happy. The world is all about being great and being successful. Our priorities are different. We can still be 
successful and do great things for God, but we cannot compromise. And that's what I see a lot happening in the church and, and in the political realm today. Again, Malachi is not talking about the wicked of the world. He's talking about God's people. Just like Jesus was talking about his people, his followers. Imagine sitting at the foot of Jesus and Jesus looking in your eyes and saying, Hey, if you don't bear good fruit, you're good for nothing. You will be cut off and thrown into the fire. This is an analogy of hell. So, that's what I have for you. Hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what, what you think about this passage. Let me see, let me know if you see how this passage applies contextually to the world and to the church today. In the comment, let me know. With that said, have a great holiday weekend. And come back next month for a special Christmas edition of my scripture reading. Bye-bye.